took a trip to Lancaster because a couple of yarn shops opened there recently. And it seems to me that you don't often hear about yarn shops opening up, but there seems to be a spate of them at the moment, which I find really encouraging, especially given that there are a handful of large yarn companies that seem to be battling it out online at the moment. So for people to make what I see is quite a bold and gutsy move towards opening a local yarn shop, bricks and mortar, I wanted to go and check a couple of them out and see how it was for them. So I got the train up to Lancaster. It's about an hour from my local train station. Um, and Lancaster is a beautiful city to begin with. It seems very um, conservation-led, I think is probably a good way to put it. It's also a university town, so it has a slightly up-and-coming feel about it at the same time. So it's a nice place to go and visit in its own right. But to have two yarn shops that are you know, maybe three minutes away from each other, also makes it definitely worth a visit. I'm wrapped up because it's eye-wateringly cold and today I'm in Lancaster. A couple of new yarn shops have opened up in Lancaster over the last few months and I just want to come and check them out. And this one is Freehold Yarn Company. It's been open for a few months now and on the last Saturday of every month they have a craft get-together. So. I'm going to go in and crochet at them um, and I'll hopefully be able to show you around the shop. Isn't it beautiful? What a lovely building. And it looks like it's a gorgeous day. <laughs> it's freezing. See you in a bit. So the first one that I went to see, purely because it was the first one down the hill from the train station, is called Freehold Yarn Company. It's run by a lovely lady called Amy. She's, um, she's Australian by descent, but now lives over here. And... It's a beautiful building, two storey, so downstairs is the shop and upstairs is a workshop space. She has a number of different notions up against one, one wall and then lots of different types of yarn. So some of the brands that she covers are Habu, Jamithsons and Smith, the um, Shetland and that's in the Supreme Lace Weight. She also had some of their heritage yarns which I was having a lovely sniff and squish with. She's got some John Arbin textiles in there. Her own yarn which I'll talk a little bit more about in a moment. There is some Tuku wool, the Jamithsons and Smith's two ply. She carries some Garthnor um, wool which is really lovely. Um, the Fibre Company, Onion Organic Cotton, Baramu, both Titus and Dovestone, and Letelope, which I bought some of, some New Lanark Mills in the Arran, and also I saw in there some Toft um, kits, crochet kits for sale. So, really quite a nice range from different parts of the world, predominantly British, but with some other well known brands in there, and some reasonably breed specific yarns in there as well. So the shop itself is nicely presented, it's very welcoming, like I said it's in a beautiful building and the range of yarns is really nice. One of the things I really loved was that Amy had put um, signs up above each of the yarns giving the suggested needle size that you should use, what the meterage was per grams and what the price was. So. Sometimes when I go into yarn shops, you don't know what the price of the goods are. And I really like the way that she made it front and centre as part of her offering. I thought that was fantastic. But the thing that really drew me to Amy's shop was her own yarn, which is called Autumn. So Autumn is from British Sheep. It's a blend of 25% Gotland, 75% Blueface Leicester. It's soft. It feels like a very luxurious yarn. And I felt Amy's sample of it knitted up and it was beautiful. And I would say that it would feel similar crocheted up. You, If you went for a larger hook size, you'd get a very airy fabric out of it. Autumn yarn comes in five different colours. Narcissus, Cloud, they're the two colours that I bought. Sage, Maple and Cornflower. And I think what's really interesting about this yarn is it was um, crowdfunded. I think more and more lovely projects like this are lifted off the ground because the crafting community are willing to put their money into this sort of project and clearly they get something back out of it at the end of it 
but it gives the owner the startup capital that they need to get the project off the ground. And yeah, I think it's fantastic to see. So if you're not going to Lancaster anytime soon, well, that's fine. You can still order online. Um, anything I think that Amy's got in the shop, you can actually just buy straight online from her and it's posted all over the world. So I said that Amy has a workshop space above the shop and just to give you an indication of some of the workshops that she has run or is running, you've got Learn to Spin, Nordic Traditions with Carrie Westerman, there was an embroidery on knits workshop which looked beautiful and embroidered linen apron and I think this is one where you watch that space and see what's coming up because if you wanted a nice day out where you could go to a workshop and spend time in a lovely town, Stroke City, then um, I would thoroughly recommend heading to Lancaster for one of these workshops. So here's what Amy has to say about her shop. It's a boutique yarn store. We sell a curated supply of great yarn and sundries focusing on small mills, high quality and natural products. Especially proud of our gorgeous collection of yarn, you'll find British favourites as well as those from further afield that we've collected in our travels to bring back to you. So the second shop is called Northern Yarn and it's run by a lovely lady called Kate. I first came across Kate at Woolfest, which is a yarn show in, um, in Cumbria and that was in 2017. And when I heard she was opening up a shop, I knew that I had to make my way up to Lancaster. Kate shares the shop space with a friend who sells gifts and other bits and pieces and pretty much one side is Kate's and the other side is her friend's and she's got all sorts of stuff in there. She really has a focus in on British breeds and where possible um, single farm wools. She also sells some of the bigger brands that you would find in other yarn shops such as Jameson's of Shetland, some King Cole, um, New Lanark wool is in there, Townend Alpacas, West Yorkshire Spinners and then she's got some more breed specific people like the Knitting Goddess, she's a local dyer called Thorn Dolly Yarns, um, Three Bears Yarn is in there, she has her own yarn, Northern Yarn and all sorts of other people like Dodgson Wool who um, again I, I bought some of their yarn because I just I could not stop myself it was so appealing <laughs> so things like the west yorkshire spinners croft the shetland tweed and aran you will find in kate's shop and it's a really lovely mix of slightly more commercial and then very bespoke gorgeous breed and blend breed yarns that are british and as local to her as she can get um, and you know great to be able to support that one of the things that I really love about Kate is that she gets right into it. So the northern yarn that she created, which was um, Paul Dorset Lambswool, she did it in a four ply and also a mix of Paul Dorset and Blueface Leicester, which was a DK. But she was in at the heart of it. She met the sheep, she helped with the shearing process, she was carrying the fleeces into the mill. Um, and, and yeah, she just um, she basically was right in the middle of the process of creating her own yarn. And that makes me very happy when people have got that much hands-on experience of producing something. One of the other things that Kate does is some of the yarn shows within the UK. She was at Yarndale last year and also at Woolfest. She's got an area on her website for events, so you can click on that to see where you might be able to come across her at a UK yarn show at some point throughout 2018. Kate also has a blog on her website which I suggest you take a look at because it's where she pops um, quite a bit of the information where she's been in with the farmers um, or it gives more details about the wools that she's using. It's interesting to go and read more about her journey through that, um, through that blog site. It was really nice to see Kate's um, largely localised take on a yarn shop. And I really enjoyed my day out in Lancaster. It's Like I say, it's a beautiful city. And to have two gorgeous but very different yarn shops to go and visit is an absolute treat. And I bought, I think, probably equal amounts from both, which is a good indicator. They both sell online as well. So if you're not local to here, but you like what they're offering, 
you can buy from them online as well and doing the online purchase still helps to support a bricks and mortar local yarn shop. 